Blessed are the trans kids whose pure hearts just long to express themselves. Here we go again. These are some of the teachers that I resonated with at earlier points in my life. They have something in common. I'll just <laughs> leave that with you. Identity shapes hermeneutic. Identity shapes hermeneutic. Who we are in context, our social location, who we are in context, it deeply affects the way that we read and understand the text and the world around us. Even though I've had the opportunity, or I've, I, I've in the past sort of res resonated with more privileged points of view, as I've gone through transition, I've gone through this process, it's been impossible for me to maintain those old readings. It just doesn't work anymore. And when I read the Beatitudes, I can't read it and understand it the same way. I just can't. And so I find myself resonating more with, with marginalized theologians, kind of alternate voices, or minority theologians. I resonate with Nadia Boltz Weber, brilliant, brilliant teacher. I resonate with James Cone and Martin Luther King Jr. and other liberation theologians. As Jesus said in the Gospel of Thomas, if you bring forth what is within you, what you bring forth will save you. If you do not bring forth what is within you, what you do not bring forth will destroy you. Queer theology teaches us that that thing about yourself that you're so embarrassed of, that thing about yourself that everyone hates in you, that thing about yourself that you're terrified that anyone would know of, what if God gave you that thing as a gift what if that's your blessing for your own joy and for the world's healing? And when I recite the Beatitudes every night as I go to sleep, I recite them as a defiant reaffirmation that I'm enough, that I belong, that God made me exactly as I am and loves me and blesses me in my life. God is on the side of the oppressed, I read in the Beatitudes. I am of heaven. The Beatitudes to me, it feels like my friends and my family, the people who love me most saying, we got your back. You know, it happened right here in this room, don't you know? Friends and family, some of the people I love the most in the world, they gathered here right in this very room a couple of months ago. We created a ceremony, it's highly, ritualized, powerful, beautiful, soaking with meaning. It was, a, it was a ritual of transition, something we don't really have in the cultural zeitgeist, but some of us queer folks, we have created it. It was a powerful affirmation of God's presence in my life. And, and in a lot of ways, this ceremony that took place in this room, we acted out the essence of the Beatitudes together. We prayed and we mourned over the ashes of loss, and we poured them out and we named our loss, and we, we celebrated the glitter of affirmation. And my mom and my dad were here, they're not even married together anymore, but they were here and they stood right here and they spoke my name to me. You are Esther. It was a beatitude. It was a powerful moment. We, we closed with the anointing oil of the Holy Spirit. One of my old pastoral colleagues, she was here, amazing, amazing person, and she anointed me with oil that was filled with those ashes and that glitter. She said my new name. You're enough. I know what it feels like. to have my people on my side, you know? And uh, to me, the Beatitudes mean what this ceremony spoke to my heart, which is there is nothing I can do to make God love me less. But I wanna close with my own rendition of the Beatitudes. Blessed are people who self-harm. Blessed are the hopeless, the traumatized, the disassociated, and the depressed. You belong. 
Blessed are those with scars on their body and on their hearts, whose souls have been shocked by the brutality of life, for they know the meaning of love and of healing. The creator of the universe sides with people who keep their heads down, those who've absorbed shame and microaggressions and discrimination, and those now who are too weary to speak up. She sides with those who are in the closet, hiding to stay safe. You are enough. God's on the side of the wrongly convicted and the punitively punished. The divine marches with protesters of injustice. They speak through community educators and activists, and they inspire prophets of futures not their own. The merciful are the lucky ones. In their weakness, they are strong. They're blessed by going to coffee with bigots and giving truth to the ignorant and returning insults with calm boundaries. They've struck the mystical jackpot by maintaining their dignity even when soaked in the contempt of those who don't believe them. Blessed are the trans kids whose pure hearts just long to express themselves, to be cherished, to be protected. Blessed are those who open their vulnerable hearts to the world, for it is only they who will experience joy. Blessed are the peacemakers, those who shapeshift in order to belong, who don't have an identity or an opinion to themselves, but instead hide in the reflection of others' projections. You are God's children. And blessed are the persecuted, those who lost their careers for being themselves, who've been vilified and misunderstood and called names, who risk their lives by driving to the store, who are shot on the street by representatives of the state. (laughs) Blessed are the persecuted who are raped and not believed, whose access to basic rights are legislated out of existence. God is on your side. This is not the end. Amen.